Jared Walsh, David Fletcher, Anthony Rendon, three players that we are going to talk about in today's episode. They were hurt, and we have some expectations for them in 2023, and we believe that they could be game changers for the Halos. You're Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can give us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Five stars, please. And if you're watching on YouTube, hello. You can subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. Thank you for being here with us on Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every single day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Mike, it always just seems to be the case that the Angels would do well and make the playoffs if they could just stay healthy. And we saw a lot of injuries this season. We saw Anthony Rendon go down with a wrist issue that was expected to keep him out of the game until the end of the season. Fortunately, he was able to come back and have a little bit of playing time there at the end. We lost David Fletcher, who was key to our defense. And of course, Jared Walsh played through the injury, and we saw that affect his game and his approach at the plate. And even Mike Trout, who had struggled with some lower back issues, we saw that affect his game as well and cause A lot of strikeouts, couldn't catch up to the fastball. Once he was healthy, he got back, and he was dominant like he always is. And that's something we'd like to see out of these three players that we're going to discuss today. We're going to start with Jared Walsh. Let's talk about his season. John, I missed him when he went down with an injury. Because he just has – he has a – I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna think of a word in this episode, but he, he just has it, right? Fans mm-hmm. just like him. We did an episode earlier this year where we talked about why struggling players, some struggling players, have fans still love them and why other players get heat, right? And yes. Jared Walsh is one of those players that no matter what he does, fans are like, ah, but he's Jared Walsh, He's right? endeared so, himself to us through yeah. his play, through the way he showed up in 2020 and then yeah. took over in 21. I think he really endeared himself to Angel fans. Yeah, so he was not the same Jared Walsh this season as the season progressed. He started off okay, but he finished with these numbers, John. 215 batting average, a 269 on base percentage, 374 slugging, and a 642 OPS. Now, in comparison, here's his 2021 stats. 277, 340, 509, and 850. Wow, that's a huge difference. We can tell that that injury really had an impact on his swing, and Jeremy Reed did as well. And so (laughs) we, we need him to get better, right? We need him to be healthy because what he brings to this team offensively, I think, is this extra bat that, doesn't need to carry the weight of the Mm -hmm. lineup, but he's one of those additives. And whenever you see a team that is successful in the playoffs, they always have the stars, but then they have the additives. Think of the Dodgers and Chris Taylor, right? Mm -hmm. This guy was phenomenal during their postseason runs over the last few years to the point where you and I were like, man, it'd be great to have Chris Taylor on the Absolutely. Yeah. And, and he, he struggled in the playoffs this last round, but, one of the things that I appreciate about him is that he's he's sneaky good. He shows up when necessary, and he gets the hit when needed. And so not all of the pressure is on a Max Muncie or a Freddie Freeman or a Mookie Betts, right? The pressure can be extended through that entire lineup, and you're like, well, I'm, I think I'm going to – I think I'm going to intentionally walk Mookie to get to Chris Taylor. And then Taylor hits a single or a right. double, right? <laughs> I see Jared Walsh as that type of player. You have mm. Trout and Otani and Rendon, and you have all of these great hitters. I think that Jared Walsh, healthy and strong in our lineup, extends our lineup and causes our lineup to be a, hey, pick your poison. Because mm-hmm. he has proven with his stats from 21 and also 2020 to be really strong offensively. Do you agree? I do agree with you. And I also think that major league teams are going to start to see him 
as a threat and possibly already see him as a threat okay. considering what he was able to do in 21. Remember that intense game against the Yankees that started off with a bad show. Hey, start. And then there was a rain delay and the angels came all the way back. Jared Walsh hits a granny off a of Roldis Chapman lefty lefty right. matchup. Right. And I think that is the kind of person that Jared Walsh is. He's a constant threat in this lineup and the way that you said it extends the lineup. I believe that I truly, truly believe that there was a great comment on YouTube. I believe it was from Miguel. And he said that the angels need to spread the wealth in terms of power bats through the lineup. And Jared Walsh is a key part of that. You and I have talked about how one of my favorite lineups is on base guy, contact guy, power hitter on yeah. base guy, contact guy, power hitter, like yeah. rinse and repeat, right? Jared Walsh is one of those contact slash power guys right. that you can count upon to move runners on base or even hit a double or hit one out. And he couldn't be that this year because of the injury he suffered, the thoracic outlet syndrome. He had surgery in September, but Mike, despite the injury, his defense, he had a 994 yes. fielding percentage yeah. at first base. So while the injury affected him at the plate, he still put out some solid defense and I think that's another thing that has endeared himself to Angel fans is the fact that Jared Walsh plays a solid first base. We're always making jokes about how he needs yoga pants over there because <laughs> yes, he's stretching sure. so much and yep. because he's able to spread his legs and do the splits and reach out for that. And it's just that split second of yep. the ball traveling to his glove and him reaching out for it. That makes all the difference when it's a bang, bang play. So right. Jared Walsh, to me, I think, again, you're right. He extends this lineup. He makes it deeper. He makes it more threatening. And Jared Walsh will be a threat in 2023. But how about you? How do you feel about him in 2023 coming off this injury? I am really expecting him to return to form. I think the Walsh that we saw in 2020 and 2021 is the Walsh that we're going to see in 2023. I yes, think that's who he is. I don't think that he is the guy that played this year. I think the injury really hurt him, uh, pun intended, right? Like he was really, yeah. really hurt. And so he tried the best to stay in there. I think the thing that I would hope for this next season for all of the angels is that they wouldn't try to hang in there. They would actually be honest about their injury and then return. Because I would hmm. rather have them trying to hang in there at the end of the season because we're making a playoff push rather than in April and May when the games matter but not as much as they matter at the hmm. end of the year. And so if 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 while she's not feeling great, I, I want him to be honest and have Mike Frosted make a make a decision about what they're gonna do. But the the diagnosis for this injury is really optimistic. Like people have this injury and then they'll come back and they'll be fine. And so yeah. my expectation for Walshy is that he's going to return to his 2020, 2021 form. I could see him hitting around 270, 280. I could see 20 to 25 home runs. I could see his OPS in the 800s, maybe even in the 900s. And I could see him playing some solid defense over at first base and saving our team a ton of errors, having a bunch of defensive runs saved. And so my expectations for Walshy is that he's going to come back and be the guy that we have grown to know and grown to love the last couple of years. What about you? I got a prediction for you. Book it. Okay. Record it. Hit record. Hey. Here we go. Done. Best season yet. 2023 Woo! will be Walsh's best season. He'll be an all-star again, and he'll be better than he was in 2021. Book it right here. Coming up on Locked On Angels, let's talk about Fletch, Bay B, and what we expect from David in 2023. And I didn't mean to rhyme that either. Uh, but first, Locked On Angels is brought to you by Roan. Johnny, you and I love to look good, but while we're looking good, we want to feel good, right? And I don't know about you, I've got these really broad uh, Papa Halo shoulders and, and you have, I got them too. as well. <laughs> and so when you wear a shirt, right, we, you have to figure out like what size shirt to wear because yeah. the, the extra large looks like you're in a parachute. And then like the, the medium is like really, really small. It looks mm -hmm. like you're trying to, you know, fat guy in a little coat, right? Like Even so, the mummy. exactly. And so what I love about Roan is that they've taken all of that into account and have created some really great, clothing and especially their commuter shirt roan is a men's clothing line and and they fit you perfectly you're never uncomfortable it's never tight they always have your size and speaking of that commuter shirt 
it's comfortable it's breathable and it's flexible in fact it's the most flexible shirt known to man and here's why they have this four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws at you so if you're commuting to work or you're playing 18 holes or you got a business dinner or you're taking your your love out for a dinner you can actually feel comfortable and look good in a Roan shirt. They've got your front and your back. And with Roan, it's easy to look good. They've had this wrinkle release technology, John, that when you get wrinkles in your shirt, you can actually pull the shirt and the wrinkles disappear. Boy, good, do I need I that. I hate ironing. I hate <laughs> yes. it. Yes. And I hate when I have wrinkles because I feel like people look at me and go, did you just oh, wake up from a you nap? You judge. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> yes. Right. Absolutely. And so with Roan, you can look good and you can feel good. And here's the good news. They've got gold fusion anti-odor technology, which means that you're going to be smelling fresh and clean all day long. Listen, this might be a bit too much information, but I know that for some reason in moments where it's like cold outside, I can get sweaty and I don't like that at all. <laughs> yes. And what's great about Roan shirts is that I know that if I get sweaty, I ain't going to smell. And that's right. a great thing. So thank you, friends at Roan. Plus, their shirts, all of their clothing is 100% machine washable, so you can ditch going to the dry cleaner. So why don't you visit Roan.com slash locked on. Use our promo code locked on to save 20% off of your order. Again, you get 20% off just because you're using our promo code. Head to the website, rhone.com slash locked on. And use our promo code locked on. You can upgrade your closet today when you visit roan.com slash locked on and use our promo code locked on to get 20% off of your order. We want to thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Mike, it's time to talk about Fletch, baby. Let's talk about <laughs> RISP. I, I did that was a good. song last year. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> David Fletcher is yeah. key to our defense and he's key to our offense and he was sorely missed this season because he had the For same sure. kind of hip issues that Anthony Rendon had in 2021. And then when Fletch came back, he looked so much better, so oh, much yeah. healthier. He got right back to what he was doing. Well, he has that slap ball approach where he slaps the ball and kind of bloops it between the infielders and the outfielders. Yep. And I believe that teams were catching on to him, but I also think that he was struggling at the plate because of those hip issues. And I even think it kind of goes back to 21. I think that there was something there that was causing him to struggle at the plate at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And also not having trout in the lineup and missing some of those big bats was not helpful for David Fletcher either, because when he has protection behind him, he sees so many more pitches. And if you yep. throw something at him in the strike zone, He's going to hit it. He's going to make right. contact. And the biggest issue the Angels had this season was not making contact. So that's why David Fletcher was sorely missed in 22. And I know that he was able to come back toward the end of the season. But why don't you talk about his results from this season? When you look at his slash line, you're not going to ever be impressed. I don't sure. think you'll ever go, oh, wow, that's incredible. But what you just said makes David Fletcher invaluable. Mm -hmm. He is the guy that will extend the inning. He's the guy that's going to annoy the pitcher. Even if he doesn't get on base, even if he grounds out, pops out, flies out, right? What David Fletcher is going to do is drive the pitcher nuts. He's either going to take a ton of pitches and foul <laughs> them off. Yeah. Or his first pitch, he's going to do something that I noticed that he did more when he came back this season. He's going to line it down the left field line. Mm -hmm. And Fletch always tries to go to right or tries to go to right center. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. I think teams started to figure that out. But what I saw David do is adjust. And then uh, how many hits did he have in a stretch in September? And maybe it was August when he was hitting it down the left field line and ended up at second base because he's doubling and they weren't expecting him to do that. The left right. fielders playing in a shift kind of over to, to center field. And so when you look at Fletch's slash line, it's never going to be like eye popping. But here's, here's his slash line from last year, 225, 288, 333, and 621. But remember, John, when he started the season, that slash line was down to 135, mm -hmm. 200, 250. I mean, he was, he was really struggling. And so when he came back, I remember looking at his line and going, he's hitting 290. He's hitting mm -hmm. 300, right? Yes. And, then, and then when he got, when he got hurt again, 
that that kind of slowed him down because he couldn't grip the bat. And yet he was a gamer and hung in there. So I'm going to say the same thing about him that I would say about Walshy. Like, we need you to sit down, Fletch, when it's time to mm. sit down, right? Mm. Because the, the sooner we get you back, the better. So I would rather have Fletch miss early and play late because he is a game changer in the lineup. And John, talk about him defensively because when Fletch is in the lineup defensively, whether he's at second base or at shortstop, the guy's phenomenal. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Seven defensive runs saved from David Fletcher. And that's not even the full season. That's right. just the few right. games that he played in 2022. Yeah, now, can I just say this real quick? Because I put these stats together. He had four at second base and had three at shortstop. Good so, grief. So just in the little time that he played in both of those positions, he saved seven runs. So mm -hmm. just a phenomenal defensive season for him. If he's batting leadoff, Mike, and he has Mike Trout and Shohei Otani behind him, and then... Rendon, Taylor Ward, Jared Walsh. Like, think about how deep that lineup gets. I love seeing Fletch at leadoff. I know they tried him down at number nine, which seems to work as well. But I, there's just something about him that makes him the prototypical leadoff guy. I know you and I had a conversation about possibly moving him down in the order just because of his ability to make contact. But I think that is a symptom of the lineup that we had in 22 in the yeah. sense that not everybody was there. Not yeah. everybody was healthy. If we have the full and healthy lineup, I think Fletch should lead off. I think that he does a good job of getting on base or making a pitcher work. So you, like you said, you frustrated the pitcher. You've had an eight to ten to twelve pitch at bat against David Fletcher, and now you got to face Mike Trout. Now yeah. you got to face Shohei Otani after you just put in the work against David Fletcher. I really think that he's he can still be a great leadoff guy. I know he doesn't walk as much, but I think his eye has gotten so much better. Since he came back from injury, I don't think he's pressing as hard. I don't think he's trying to work through problems that he's been having. I would love to see him back at the top of the order, in my opinion, because that contact is so key. And I think having him in front of Trout and Otani is only going to make him better. But how do you feel about him in 2023? If I'm Phil Nevin, I'm going to pay close attention to the lineup difference between what happens in the top three versus what happens in four through six or four hmm. through nine, mm -hmm. because the stats show this, our OPS for the top three was the best in baseball. And <laughs> then from four to nine, it was awful. And it, yeah, the you worst. could feel it when you were watching the game <laughs> and every fan was like, Oh yeah, that makes sense because there was no hits for like three innings. And then it was Ward trout and Otani getting on base. And so, if I'm Phil Nevin, what, what my expectation would be for David Fletcher is I'm going to put him in the part of the lineup that the lineup is struggling the most. Mm. And I'm going to put him right in the middle of all of that because he is a guaranteed contact, which means that he's either getting a hit or he's actually making contact and not striking out. So it can potentially move runners over. Mm -hmm. I advocated possibly for uh, for David Fletcher to back clean up. And uh, some were like, yeah, that's great. And then others were like, what a stupid decision. I get that. I get that. But what I, my, my thought behind it was he is somebody who's going to make contact and move runners over. Sure. And you've got your best base runners in Ward, Trout, and Otani at the top of the lineup. And so I think that where, where if I'm Phil Nevin, I'm putting Fletcher – where the lineup is struggling the most and not slotting him here and then keeping him here. I'm going to put him in a place where, you know what? The middle of the lineup is struggling. Let's bat him clean up today. That's you know smart. what? The bottom of the lineup is struggling. Let's have him be seven or eight, maybe even nine. But I think that he has to be in there somewhere, especially if you have guys like Rendon and Walsh who have shown to struggle a bit, strike out a lot when they're when they're struggling and so I'm, I'm going to slot him in to help alleviate some of that pain now if it has a negative effect on Fletch then I'm going to find a, a spot and keep him in that spot and I think leadoff is a great suggestion and outside of maybe batting ninth I would put him at leadoff as well last player that we want to look at is Anthony Rendon of yeah. course had a great 2020 top 10 MVP voting in 2020 it was a 60 game sprint Feels like he it was, was there. forever ago. <laughs> I know, I know. But Mike, in 21, he had those hip issues. He had a season cut short. In 22, again, season cut short with the wrist injury. But let's look at his numbers from 2022. He had a 229 batting average, a 326 on base percentage, 
a 380 slugging percentage, so a combined 706 on base plus slugging. Defensively, 948 fielding percentage with three defensive runs saved. I don't think Anthony Rendon's defense is ever in question right. when he's over at third base. We've seen him make some phenomenal plays, whether that's a diving catch or going the extra mile in foul territory to catch a ball that could just land in the seats and he'll make it an out. And we love seeing that. We love seeing his defense, but really the bat has been the, the most disappointing part of his game other than missing all of the games that he is getting paid to not play. Um, yeah. It's not my money, so I don't care, but <laughs> at the end of the day, it would be great to see him on the field more than just April, May, and some of June, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think what we're going to find next season is he's going to solidify that third base slot. And that's the thing that we talked about ad nauseum in 2021 when he was out, how Phil Gosselin was not the guy that's going to fill in for him. Mm -hmm. And then in 2022, uh, Jonathan VR was not the guy <laughs> that was going to fill in for him. And, and God bless Louis Renjifo, but he is not the guy that's going to fill in over there. Anthony Rendon is a vacuum over there. And, and you are a successful team when you have great defense, especially mm -hmm. at the hot corner. And so Rendon is the Adrian Beltre of the angels, right? Like mm -hmm. he's going to scoop mm -hmm. up everything over there when it comes to his bat. I, I just, I think that's, he, he, this is a prove it year for him. He's got to come through this year. He's got to stay healthy this year. This is season number four in a seven year right. contract. So we only have three years left with him. And we really haven't seen the Rendon that the Washington Nationals saw. And no. right now, the narrative for Angel fans is, I don't think we're ever going to see that guy. And we're speaking from yeah. some baseball PTSD because we've seen that happen <laughs> over the years, right. especially for you and I who have been Angel Bulls fans for a long time. Yeah, 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 right? I mean, we can go way back to the 90s and even in the 80s when people came over, it was like, oh, we're so excited about this. And we signed Reggie Jackson and he has one good year. And then the rest of the time he's terrible. And then he leaves and goes to, I think it was Oakland and ends up right. looking incredible and winning a world series or yeah. at least getting to the <laughs> world series. You know, so it's like, it's frustrating in Anaheim sometimes with these big money free agents, which is why a lot of us are like, no, don't just go with the young guys. I think this is a prove it year for Anthony Rendon. My expectations are very, very low because mm. I don't want to be disappointed again, John. I get that. I, I think that if you give him a healthy year, he's going to produce. What I like about him is his ability to take walks. And it yeah. almost makes me question having him in the fourth spot. I almost feel like he would serve better at the second spot. And then Trout yeah. is behind him and Otani's behind him. Otani's batting cleanup because Otani is the power bat. Now, Mike Trout is the best hitter on the team consistently, but he's hitting the ball in the air more. He's becoming more of a power guy. He's not quite the Mike Trout he used to be, but if you throw Anthony Rendon in front of him and Rendon takes the walk, then Trout becomes that much more of a threat in the lineup. So I think you yeah. can take advantage of the fact that maybe Anthony's average uh, isn't quite what it used to be, but at the end of the day, he's still Tony two bags for a reason. And when he does hit a double, who better than Mike Trout and Shohei Otani to come up behind him to hit him in? And again, it just extends the lineup like we keep talking about. If he's batting second, then you go deeper and deeper with Trout and Otani and Walsh and Ward and Renhifo. Like, I'm getting excited just talking about this yeah, potential lineup. <laughs> and I know we do this every year because yeah. our lineup is really good and right. really potent. And right. unfortunately, the guys can't stay on the field. So, yeah. I think if Anthony Rendon is going to have a good season next year, he's got to continue to be great at defense. We have to expect that his average is not going to be quite what it used to be with the Nationals. Also, yeah. we got to have depth because Anthony Rendon has shown us he can't play every day. He's going to get hurt somehow. He's going to get worn down somehow. Right. And I think the depth behind him that we have currently is somebody like Luis Renjifo, who – is not a bad third baseman, but he doesn't compare in terms of defense to Rendon. Right. You can't run another kind of Matt Duffy out there. I think we really need some sort of solid middle infielder like Brandon Drury, like we keep talking about. I would love to see him on this team. I really think it would serve the Angels well to get that fourth infielder who can play every day, play different positions, 
And when Anthony Rendon needs a day off, which we're going to see more and more of as he gets older and as he plays out this contract, we really have to have somebody behind him who can still produce at his level, if not better. Well, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On MLB Podcast with our friend, Paul Francis Sullivan. We call him Soli. You can too. And he's checking in on all of the Major League Baseball playoffs. And so follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, for all your playoff needs. And you can do that on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. We're really grateful that you decided to join us for this conversation about three key players who need a healthy 2023. And if you have any thoughts, you can always comment on YouTube if you're watching there. And of course, you can reach us at Lockdown Angels on Twitter or at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Mike, tomorrow's Friday. What do we have on deck before we head into the weekend? Well, just how valuable are the halos? I know a lot of people are like, well, if they don't win, they're not really valuable. But we've got numbers that actually speak very differently. And I think these numbers are going to be really important as new ownership comes in to see what it is that you are actually purchasing. And the angels are a great purchase. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow on Locked on Angels. Sounds like a good conversation. And we hope that you'll return tomorrow and join us for that. Until then, my name is John and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Angels, and we will see you tomorrow.